Nowadays, hay would be saved in late May or early June. In the 1930s, however, it would not have been cut until early or mid-July. It was discovered that as grass ages, it becomes less nutritious. Hay is produced by cutting down a meadow of grass, turning it over a couple of times during a five-day period, taking it into the barn and leaving it there to be fed to the animals over the winter. That was the simple basic principle of haymaking. It was seldom as easy a process as that. Weather forecasting in the 1930s was not very accurate. Some would say that little has changed on the forecasting front in the past 70 years. So at haymaking time, there was a lot of studying the moon, the sky at night, and various other signs which were supposed to foretell what the weather was going to be. Rain on cut grass washes out the nutrients, as does too much sun. Overworking with machinery was also not recommended if you wanted good hay. So when the weather looked settled, the mowing of the hay would begin. With one field down and in the process of being saved, Patrick is just starting the second sward of a heavier crop. This grass is damp and sticks in the cutting bar of the mowing machine. Something has to give and it is the metal shaft of the mowing machine. There will be no more mowing today. Breaking a metal shaft like this shows the power that these two horses have. Ordering and receiving a new part for a machine back in the 30s could have taken a very long time, so broken parts were often repaired rather than replaced. Some craftspeople, such as the village blacksmith, were essential to the farmers not only for shoeing the horses, but also for repairing broken farm implements. The following afternoon, Patrick was back in business, the shaft of his mowing machine repaired and working as good as new. This mower is a Deering International, made in Canada in the early 1920s. Irish foundries like Pierce of Wexford were by this time turning out hundreds of mowers of different sizes, which could be pulled by one horse or two. By 1900, it is believed that there were more than 20,000 mowing machines in Ireland. Hailed as another major breakthrough, this machine with the addition of another seat and a few minor adjustments would again be needed in a few weeks' time for cutting the corn. A successful reaper had been developed by a Scotsman in 1828, but the side-mounted model, like the one we see here, was invented by the American Cyrus Hall McCormick from the Rockbridge County, Virginia, in 1831. McCormick did well with his reaper, for he was a multi-millionaire when he died in 1884 at the age of 75 years. At very busy times of the year, and especially at haymaking, it was common for the neighbours to help. A farmer often formed a partnership with his neighbours, exchanging labour on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as horses and machinery. Families that were down on their luck, elderly, sick or with very young children, were often helped at busy times of the farming year. The local priest or minister was always sure of plenty of assistance when his hay needed to be saved. It was not uncommon to see four or five people working in a meadow, although as many as a dozen might be necessary if the crop was heavy or the weather bad. In many cases, women were expected to work in the meadow at haymaking, and indeed if men were scarce, could also have been expected to work the horses. The hay pike was a good effective way to turn and shake the hay. This practice would have to be repeated many times if the weather was wet. It was said that hay could survive up to eight days of constant rain, but if the weather did not improve after that time, the hay would most likely be lost or its feeding value so badly affected that it would only be suitable for bedding. However, nowadays, as silage making is almost weatherproof, less and less hay is being made. The progress made in farming during the 20th century was already well underway in the 1930s, for although nearly all of the work was still being done by horses, 
many ingenious inventions were coming onto the market which made the farmers less dependent on manpower. This one-horse hay turner, again manufactured in Wexford, could, if the weather was fine, save the hay without any hay pikes being used. The spikes of the turner would have lifted up any damp grass and turned it over to be saved by the sun. There were various types of hay turners and kickers around at that time, some pulled by one horse and some by two. Whichever way they were operated in the meadow, these machines all had one thing in common. They were slowly but surely doing away with the need for large-scale manpower on the farm. Between 1900 and 1930, the number of farm labourers on the land had halved, and by the 1960s, that number had halved again. Today, farming is mostly a one-man operation. Any farmer with a machine like this one would have been very popular with his neighbours. The horse-drawn hay rake had teeth which could be raised or lowered using a lever in front of the driver's seat. When the makings of a peak have been brought together, the men have set about their task as they have done many times before. It is now four days since the hay was cut. Four days of good dry weather and sunshine. The men are building a hay peak, which in spite of rain could be left in the field for a number of weeks. In due course these hay peaks will be removed to the stack and used to build into one large stack. Hay had to be completely dry before the large hay peak was built, for if there was too much moisture in it, it was likely to rot, overheat, and in very extreme cases, go on fire. Patrick and his son Michael are making a grass rope. This will be used to tie down the stack. A grass rope made from hay was quite strong, and in early times would have been used as harness for horses and donkeys. A week later, Patrick and Michael have started drawing the hay peaks from the meadow to the yard, where they will be made into a larger stack and stored over the winter. For many centuries, the hay was simply forked from the hay peaks and built onto a hay cart. Hay carts varied from one part of the country to another. Some had to be low slung if they were working high ground. First invented at the start of the 19th century, this hay cart with a two-man operated pulley was capable of taking the entire peak onto the hay cart. And although a slow enough operation, this method was used in farms until the advent of the buck rake during the 1950s. The father and son team will clear this field of peaks and before nightfall. It was always a relief to see the hay safely in, as the quality of the hay determined the health and value of the farmer's livestock, and ultimately how much income the sale would bring in.